Hi, this is Hal from Light with another video recap of Monday Night Light, our free live weekly web seminar run every Monday from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Pacific. For the last few weeks, we've been discussing the trinity of sharpening, that is input sharpening, content sharpening, and output sharpening. Last Monday, we finished up this discussion by looking at input sharpening. Remember, we did everything in reverse. The input sharpening discussion is going to be a quick recap because we can leverage heavily off of what we learned previously for either content or output sharpening. For majority of this demonstration, I'm going to use the Lightroom interface, and that is going to be in the Develop module. On the right panel, the Detail tab, we'll see sharpening. For those that happen to be Bridge users, that is not a problem because if you find yourself from Bridge to ACR to Photoshop, then in the Adobe Camera Raw 5.5 dialog, once again on the Detail tab, you're going to have the sharpening sliders, amount, radius, detail, and masking that are the exact same as what you're going to find within Lightroom. So the engines work the same, everything is commensurate between Lightroom and ACR 5.5. The first thing to know about the input sharpening is that we are going to do this near the beginning of our workflow, but that doesn't mean that when we bring an image initially to the develop module or into Adobe Camera Raw that the first thing we need to do is input sharpening. It just has to be somewhere within our non-destructive procedural workflow. When we get to input sharpening, and we know we do that to overcome the effects of the anti-alias or low-pass filter within the digital camera, kind of a necessary evil right now and that we'd like to not have our optical signal slightly blurred, but it is in order to make our sensor work better. I'm sure as sensor technology improves, we're not going to have to do this at all, or hopefully not as much. When you input sharpen, both Lightroom as well as ACR are going to require us to be at a zoom level of 1 to 1 or greater in order to see these effects. On ACR, that's going to mean that we're at 100%. So actual pixels is where we can see it. We can move our amount and radius sliders all day, and unless we're at 100%, we're not going to see the effects. So remember, when you're doing input sharpening, make sure that you happen to have 100%. In Lightroom, we're going to see that because it has a small exclamation point here telling us you need to zoom in. And for those who happen to use ACR, there is a small warning down here below the Detail tab. It says Zoom Preview to 100% or larger. Now, although it says 1 to 1 or 100% or larger, go strictly with 100%. What we're trying to do with input sharpening is find detail. We want to regain a little bit of that detail that was lost in the capture process. So our workflow here at Light is the first thing. We will go in and examine the image completely. That is going to allow us to help set our radius slider. We will approach setting the radius slider just like we did with output sharpening. A real quick recap of our sliders themselves, amount, that's the intensity of the algorithm. Radius, over how many pixels is that intensity applied. Detail controls the size of the halos, and masking is just it's very similar to a mask in Photoshop, but we're going to selectively determine where we want sharpening to occur within our image. Much like our output or content sharpening, we recommend starting with the radius. And your radius, you can see here, is going to be limited from 3 down to 0.5 pixels, which means we're really talking here about low radius, high amount. As you might expect, we need to recapture fine detail. So I'll examine the image first and say what level of detail do we have. If it's high detail, light recommends anywhere from 0.5 to 1. A medium detail, 1 to 1.5. And if it's a relatively low detail image, anywhere from 2 to 3 pixels as our radius exact same rules of thumb that we talked about in our earlier sharpening. For this image, I think it's somewhat high detail when we look at the Monterey Shell formation here in Montana de Oro, but very low detail out in the water. Not a problem because I'm going to mask it, but I'm going to leave my radius right around 1. The default, by the way, is 1, so if you are uncertain, just leave it at 1 and you'll typically be good to go. The next thing we look at is amount. Now the default amount of sharpening is 25. And we're not seeing anything, of course, right now because I'm not zoomed in. You will see on JPEGs and TIFFs, as well as any of the PSDs you might have within Lightroom, and over in ACR, that's JPEGs, just JPEGs and TIFFs, you will see a default amount of zero because those files have already had some type of in-camera sharpening applied. So to move the amount slider, 
we're going to need to actually zoom into 100%. So I click in to where I consider to be one of the critical areas of this image that needs sharpening. At that point, we start our Goldilocks process. I'll leave it right there at the beginning, or at the default, 25. And then I toggle on and off. I'm looking to see that slight change. If I have to squint and try really hard to find it at 25, then I move up. If it jumps off the screen at me, it's probably too much, and I need to back it off. Here, I don't think it's quite enough, so I'm going to take that sharpening level up to 50. And we will start to see just a slight increase. Not sure that is going to translate across uh, the web here in YouTube, but you know the process because you've been doing it all along. So the Goldilocks sharpening by toggling our on and off switch. Remember, if you happen to be an ACR user, you're just going to be toggling the preview, which is up to the right of the toolbar. Once you get to the appropriate level of sharpening, as determined by toggling on and off, then we can move forward into the additional sliders. So radius, easily set. Amount, we use the Goldilocks method. And then we move down into detail and masking. Remember when you're doing this sharpening that we don't need much at all. It is a very small amount of sharpening to overcome a very slight blurring of our image. This is not the point to fix an out of focus image with input sharpening. As we always say, when you over sharpen an out of focus image, you end up typically with a mess. So we have this sharpening algorithm applied, and it's an interesting one in that it is luminance values only. Remember in our demos we saw that there were changes to tones as, cha as well as changes to color when we used unsharp mask or smart sharpen. Here within Lightroom or ACR, all we change are the luminance values. So you're never going to see a true color shift or any kind of intensification of colors along edges. Now the detail slider does control halos, and those are that, that kind of fuzzy area over which some of our sharpening is applied. We recommend at light leaving the detail slider at 25. Finally, we find ourselves with the masking slider. And the masking slider gives us automated functionality for some targeted or selective sharpening. If you happen to hold down the Alt or the Option key and click onto the masking slider, notice that the entire display goes white. That is showing us that this is reveal all, much like the masks for sharpening or for anything in Photoshop. White reveals, black conceals. So with masking slider at zero, the sharpening is applied everywhere. Your workflow, though, should be to take that masking slider up. And as you do, Lightroom or ACR is going to find places that have edge contrast or texture detail and keep those white, whereas everything that has low texture or no contrast is going to be made black. So what we see is a mask here with targeted sharpening. Only places that are white on this mask do we get sharpening. So I could crank this all the way to the right and I see that I'm just getting sharpening along some of the edges of the rock, but if I scroll up here into the water, most of the sharpening, if not all of the sharpening, is removed. So it's following a very similar process to what we built using that detailed mask action or output action in Photoshop is doing the same thing for us here within Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. If we check and spot check around the image with our masking slider, we'll see that, yep, we get good sharpening along the edges and places we have texture detail, but limited input sharpening any place that we have low texture or low detail, such as the water. Now that was the first instance that we used the Alter option. You will see many other tutorials and books that say, say, you know, you could come in and hold down the Alter option key, click onto amount, radius, or detail, and see what you have going on there. That is certainly true, and I think it's more of a gee whiz thing than beneficial towards us, because we don't want to just say, all right, I'll look at this in uh, grayscale and move my slider and try and determine what the appropriate amount of sharpening is. Instead, follow that good Goldilocks method. Once you have your four sliders set, you're ready to move forward in the workflow. Now that can be just about any workflow within Lightroom or ACR. Remember mine here in Lightroom, I typically start big to small, so to make my universal adjustments, followed by top to bottom, basic, down through vignettes, and then I make local adjustments up here with the graduated filter as well as the adjustment brush. Very similar to what we do within Adobe Camera Raw, we make the universal adjustments, and then I work left to right from basic all the way over 
in most cases, towards lens correction. Don't really need to go beyond that unless I'm doing a couple of other things. Don't get me wrong, valuable tabs, but not in my normal workflow. And then once I have those big corrections done, I will get up to the adjustment brush or the graduated filter to make this happen. So that's a quick recap of input sharpening. Remember, if you have any doubt, under sharpen, and you're going to be, I think, a little bit better off than if you tend to over sharpen. Thanks a lot. We'll see you on Monday. Any questions, comments, or concerns, please shoot me an email, hal at lightworkshops.com. Remember to pick up the link for next week's Monday Night Light on the blog or via Twitter.